Good day, children. Today we're taking a brief look at the fascinating life of this mustachioed badass, the last Kaiser of the German Empire, Wilhelm II. And we begin at the very beginning, his birth. The year is 1859, and his mother, Vicky, only 18 years old, has gone into labor with her first child, and things are not going well. The baby in the womb is upside down, and I don't mean upside down like this. This would be the correct upside down. Wilhelm is in this position, and it's not good. Humans, you see, have massive heads. As Mr. Onella explains in his lesson, Top 10 Worst Animal Skeletons, we take the number one spot on account of what he calls the scale-to-pelvis ratio. Head first allows the baby's soft skull to conform somewhat to the birth canal. Once the baby's massive noggin is through the vagina, it's a relative doddle to get the rest of the new human out of its mother, all things being equal. What the prince, and future Kaiser, is attempting here is called a breech birth. Instead of coming out head first, he exits with his royal buttocks first. This is very uncomfortable for his mother, and life-threatening for his royal highness. This being 1859, Vicky is relieved of her pain with chloroform, the anaesthetic properties of which having been discovered only twelve years prior. In the final stages of this 13-hour-long birthing process, the doctors decide to straight-up knock the Princess Vicky out cold with a full dose of chloroform. It's at this point that Wilhelm is yanked out of his mother, tearing the brachial plexus of his left arm, leaving it, his arm that is, partially disabled for the rest of his life. The condition is known as Erb's palsy and results in the underdevelopment of the affected limb. As a result, the adult Wilhelm's left arm was a full six inches shorter than the right, and not entirely useful. Not entirely useless either, mind you. Thus, the future Kaiser was born in Berlin, which, in little over a decade hence, would become the capital of a unified Germany and of an empire. Over at Windsor Castle, Queen Victoria was so excited by the news that it is recorded Her Majesty ran up and down the corridors to tell her husband of the good news, then to send off numberless telegrams to Berlin and to relations, etc. Why ever should the Queen of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland be so joyful over the birth of a Prussian prince? Well, you see, dear children, she had just become a grandmother. Vicky was her eldest daughter. That's right, dear children. The last emperor of Germany is the current Queen Elizabeth's first cousin twice removed. Queen Elizabeth, a four-year-old Wilhelm was taken to England in 1863 for the wedding of the Queen's great-grandfather, the future King Edward VII, to Princess Alexandra of Denmark. For the occasion, young Wilhelm was dressed in traditional Highland garb, which included a toy Scottish dirk. The little dagger would later be used to threaten his uncle Alfred, who told him to be quiet during the ceremony. Shh. Ah, uh, little Villy, the impatience and aggression you've shown at your uncle's wedding will characterize your reign as Kaiser. You will go on to advance the German Empire, yes, you will. You will build a massive navy that will make the British very uneasy. You will do much to advance science, art, and industry in the fatherland. 
Indeed, you will cement Germany firmly as a great power in the heart of Europe. Alas, a great and terrible war will break out in your twenty-seventh year on the throne, the conclusion of which will see you lose your throne in a crushing defeat for imperial Germany, and the empire will be no more. So, my life has come to this. Oh, look, an axe. Once king of Prussia and Kaiser of all Germany, and now this, exiled in the Netherlands. Hmm, maybe I'll try it out on this tree. That was quite satisfying, actually. Hmm. What is there for an ex-Kaiser to do but to dream of former glories? I can still remember my most infamous speech these two decades later. Should you encounter the enemy, he will be defeated. No quarter will be given. Prisoners will not be taken. Whoever falls into your hands is forfeited. Just as a thousand years ago, the Huns under their King Attila made a name for themselves, one that even today makes them seem mighty in history and legend. May the name German be affirmed by you in such a way in China that no Chinese will ever again dare to look cross-eyed at a German. Well, children, there you have it, a small insight into the life of this extraordinary figure of history. By the way, the Kaiser's great-grandson is this man, the 45-year-old Georg Friedrich Ferdinand, Prince of Prussia. History is alive and walks among us, children. Just as the Second World War was a consequence of the First, so too are our lives birthed from yesteryear. And remember, head first! I'm Sigmund Oppenbaum. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.